Welcome to the 12 by 12 junk journal challenge of 2024. Today I wanted to show you some things that I can get here at Amazon India and it's just amazon.in um, here over here and I found these really cool needle sets and threading sets and I love the the old style backing for these needles whenever I find those in um, like estate sales I always use them for journaling cards because they're so cute in vintage journals and um, it here in India they still come on those cool old um, style vintage cards I found some of these little trinket beads I thought would be cute to hang on the front of a journal they were 35 rupees and that is just under 50 cents I also got this uh, threader because when we get those threaders that are like that silver tab whenever you're threading with the silver tab one you know that that um, the piece of wire that is supposed to pull the thread through the needle it will just come off if your um, thread is too thick or you pull it the wrong way or if you've used it too many times it just falls right out so I wanted to try these different styles that they have here and this one's really cool you push this yellow button and I'm trying to I'm trying to sh let you see here you push this yellow button and it it like pushes out a little hook and you put the hook through the needle the eye of the needle and then it and then you put while that's through the eye of the needle you put a piece of thread on the hook and then when you release it it pulls it through I also picked up some of the same style of threaders that we have in the US except for look how thick the handle is it's not that flimsy piece of tin uh, that we get there it's really heavy duty it's a thick piece of plastic and the wire seems to be uh, much more intact and so um, because it's more it's like a hook and, and not a wire I'm sorry I can't get this into the frame there but see it's a little hook instead of a loop I'm sorry a little loop so you pull the hook right through and look at that it's so easy and I don't think that this would break as easily as the ones that we have do see can you see that hook it's tiny and I think I got five of these for 230 rupees um, which is about three bucks so I felt like it was a good deal and especially now that I see how durable or sturdy this is it's not gonna break like our other ones that we're used to do this needle kit is actually an upholstery set and I thought this dowel would be great for making the holes for our spine and it's for stitching your um, upholstery and this has lots of really cool needles that I thought would be great for stitching the spine together but really I got it for this hooked needle for stitching together the new upholstery on our sofa and it just has so many um, cool ones that I couldn't get in um, the, the normal shop the fancy shops here and of course that card is gonna be so cool as a journal card and this is where we are going to be upcycling and trying to salvage some of these old garments these were discarded and i tried to get all of the stains out that i could and now we're going to be cutting them and making journal covers as well as embellishments these are bits and ends from a sari, so some people would call this sari silk, but it is a georgette sari, and I'm going to take this right here, this um, little uh, decoration, and I'm going to be cutting them out, and this way we can either stitch them to a page or a cover, or we can glue them. And here's some more. This shirt has gone to two or three people 
before it was discarded and sometimes my friends would just ask me if I want some some of their old garments even though they're like holy or stained or something and uh, because they know that I like to salvage as much of them as I can. I'm going to leave a lot of room on ex and excess uh, material here because this is my doTERRA journal. It's pretty small compared to the A4 sizes that I like to do. Um, it's, it's a little bit shorter, I would say, um, but I wasn't sure what size I would like, so I'm going to leave it long and we can adjust it later, but we have one cover done. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove these embellishments and we're going to turn them into almost like a sticker. <laughs> it's, it's not sticky, but we will attach it either with glue or with sewing and it will be something like a patch or a sticker and we can um, use it to jazz up our journal covers. I didn't want to waste these pieces, so when you're go when you're upcycling or salvaging things from old clothes, you can always use these excess pieces as rags or for patches for other garments. And so here I'm just going to use this other piece for as many rags as I can for cleaning. And we're gonna be moving soon, we're shifting our house. So these rags will come in super handy to leave the house sparkling and clean. And here we have these appliques that are just gorgeous and ready to go. When you salvage appliques, you just have to clean up the edges as close as possible. You don't have to be super intricate because when you are gluing or sewing, um, you don't know what the backing is gonna be. You, you may be doing it onto another fabric. So what, I'm, what I do is I get as close as I can to the edges. Unfortunately, I'm out of, there we go. I get as close as I can to the edges like this and then I'm just going to um, glue. First I'm gonna glue and then I will stitch any edges or even glue down any edges. And if it's gonna be on the edge of a page, of course you're going to glue and then stitch to make sure that it's on really well because that's gonna be open and closed a lot of times. But if it's just going on the cover, um, it, it should already have a cardboard back for that cover or something that's pretty strong so you won't need to worry about it falling off because it's not going to be bent at all. Next I have this curtain top and I really really love this top. Unfortunately I could not get all the stains out and I'm going to save as many of these little decorations as I can because I love them. It was so cute and I'm even going to save, I'm being careful just to take off this top layer because this is a two layer curtain top which means it had like an apron over the main top so it's it's barely attached it's only attached on the upper half so i'm going to try to salvage it and add a new a new apron on the top because it's so cute and it would be perfect for holy which is the festival of color i, I talked about that before in another video and so i'm going to save this and i'm going to try to put it on another apron and this is going to be i think we could probably get two or three journal covers out of this and we can also save some of these little mirror bundles or sections here. 
and I just want to measure with the journal here to get the right size see how cute that is we can even use these these ties here I thought I may be able to hide some of these stains by adding these back on, but I'll probably add a different one, maybe this one. Add something to cover the stain. That's kind of cute because there's two stains there. But we know the general size, so I'm just going to rough cut this because later it'll be stitched or glued onto my journal backing. So, I, but I know I want the tie in the middle. I am trying my best to figure out how to salvage this top. I love the beading, I love the work, the appliques, but I'm having a hard time. So this sorry blouse was given to me and it was about three or four sizes too big and I thought I was gonna have to salvage it, but guess what? I was able to have it altered and now it fits. So this is one that um, we won't be salvaging today, but I wanted to show how beautiful it was because it almost became a journal cover <laughs> But now I wear it. So this one I'm trying to figure out how to update the style so I can wear it because look at these sleeves so cute But if it's not possible, these are going to become um, journal decor or journal cover um, it's just it's a very Western look and so I'm trying to figure out if it's worth taking off the appliques, but I love it. It's on a purple velvet, so gorgeous, and I'm really hoping I can figure out how to actually wear it. And it's really hot here, so I do not wear velvet very much. This is a bag of rice that you can get from Sam's Club, and I wanted to turn this into a purse, but it's too rough on my arms when I wear it or hold it so I'm going to try to salvage as much as possible for a journal cover. I'm going to be doing an A4 size so I'm going to use this piece of printing paper here and try to get these photos in the middle, at least the words in the middle. The first thing we need to do is to get all these seams out. So I'm going to be seam ripping and making this a flat piece of burlap. I forgot to mention that when you go to Sam's Club to pick this up, it is not in the craft section. You actually have to buy the bag of rice and then when you're done eating it, then you can craft with it. I'm going to go ahead and take out the zipper and the handles and we can try to incorporate those later so that they're not wasted but um, I'm hoping that we can use it for another project.
we were able to get four covers out of that rice bag. It's gonna be so cute. And we got, I think we got all together, um, one, two, three, four, five, six covers. And we got some cute little um, decorations there. And now I wanted to show you some different kinds of saris that we have. I believe this one is a polyester and cotton blend. I love it because it's printed, but on the printing, they did an outline of embroidery. It's almost like it, it was quilted. And when I wear it, it makes me feel like I'm a lily princess. I love it. This one is what we call a georgette. It's a, like a sheer material. It's very light, and we really love wearing this style during the summer because it is very nice and cool. This one is a different style of Georgette because this one to me it feels a little bit it's a little bit heavier but still it, it's a light material. This is a silk sari. It has silk pieces pieces of silk woven into it so that you can see the difference between a print and a actual wo woven material because you'll see the the weaving in it you'll see the strings that they wove into it it's a blended sari so it's a uh, much lighter than a hundred percent silk sari but any silk is going to have that super shiny aspect to it, or the super shiny look. At one end of a sari, you'll find a decorative piece, and this is the palu. It goes behind your shoulder, and it's, it's folded or pleated. And then on the other end, you'll usually find a piece that's going to be cut off and made into a blouse. This one is a cotton and so th these have been passed down and gifted to us. It's printed, it's not woven. You can see that there's no weave, it's, it's a print. So it, it's a pattern that's been painted on there and then um, it's a, it's a bit of a, it's not soft, it's a bit of a rough texture but um, the old vintage saris are the old vintage saris are the best because you can do so much and um, wear it in your daily life. This one is on velvet and it's actually not a sari. This one is something like a, a dress that you would wear to a party. Um, but it's so old. This is such a vintage piece that the lining and the tool that's on here is literally falling apart in my fingers it's disintegrating off of the off of the backing and the underskirt so i tried to salvage it but i'm going to have to cut it up because it's it's just falling it's becoming dust this is a silk sorry you can see the shine and it's gorgeous and i'm i love the look of a silk sari but when you wear one it is a really 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 warm it makes you sweat so in the winter is an easier time to wear a silk sari um, because in the summer I wore one last summer and I felt like I lost 10 pounds just sweating in in this silk sari and it's it takes a lot longer to fold all the pleats and you can see the beautiful weaving it must have been a master weaver here, I met a family of silk sari weavers and the older people in the family, they would sit and they would make one sari a day with their giant um, weaving machine and the younger people could make up to two or three saris, which is so impressive to me. This one it has some silk and embroidery in it, but it's more of like a, not like a crepe, or some kind of, it's some kind of a synthetic material. I, I can't, I can't put my finger on it, but it's, I love the color. This is a beautiful red. This one is one of my favorites. This was gifted to us by an auntie who we've known for 
like 20 years and look at the different colors it's so gorgeous and there's even different patterns in this and this is the palu this goes over your shoulder and it's just and even has some um, glued on beading it's they're not beads that are sewn on they're glued on like rhinestones and I love it look at it it's so shiny so gorgeous now when people talk about the sari silk they're using they're usually talking about the palu or like the very bottom of the sari will have the colors but this one is packed with potential and I don't think I could ever cut this up because it's so gorgeous it would have to be really destroyed like burnt or ripped or something and still we would try to make blouses or tops or skirts out of it because it's so beautiful I'm not sure exactly what this is made out of it feels like it might have cotton in it but it's so shiny so it might be like a Georgette you can see that it, the color is in the weave so it I'm wondering if this is some kind of really fine silk possibly but I love this this pattern on it and the poly is beautiful with these leaves um, when I look at this it makes me feel like I need to wear this as a pantsuit like a power suit and look at this this is the blouse it, it would be the top that you wear with it you cut that part off and it's made into a blouse right here is where you cut it These are a few that are in our collection. I just wanted to show you the different beautiful varieties there are. Thanks for joining me today. Check out the description for links to the other artists that are in this challenge. They have lots of tips and tricks for you. I'll see you next time.